Hey everyone, my name is Ben Chaish. I'm a wedding and elopement photographer based in the Pacific Northwest. And today we're gonna do a little bit of a comparison video, a little bit of a, you know, Leica versus Voigtlander. I recently picked up, yesterday actually, uh, the Leica 28 millimeter Summicron. So it is a 28 millimeter F2 lens. And then I have had the Voigtlander Ultron 28 millimeter F2 lens for a couple of years now. And I was trying to look for videos and stuff like that to see if, you know, people had experiences with both. And I think it's a pretty limited audience that is really interested in this kind of thing. But that is kind of the reason I made this YouTube channel to answer questions that I had that I wasn't seeing other people addressing. So today we're gonna do a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison, check out the two and figure out how well the Voigtlander performs at I think like 600 bucks versus what the Leica performs at at about $4,900. that size wise they are pretty darn close I don't actually have the lens hood for the Voigtlander so I can't compare that but if I take these off um, and kind of stick them side by side and this isn't exactly a fair comparison because I've got the M6 on one side and the uh, M10 on another but like they're almost identical in length um, so they're both almost touching the other body there. So I would say, in, you know, in, in terms of like actual size, they're pretty darn close in that way. Um, this is the version two of the Summicron that has this, and you can hear it, <laughs> metal lens hood, uh, which I personally find to be incredibly attractive and a very beautiful piece of whatever. Apparently I'm starstruck by it. The Voigtlander comes with, or I've seen it come with, a circular lens hood. Uh, mine didn't come with it when I bought it secondhand, and I haven't really had much of an issue with it, to be honest. This thing flares like crazy, but it's kind of like a fun, interesting flare. I'm not trying to get perfection out of this lens. Now, so they're both 28 millimeters. F2, they're both really, really small. The thing that I love about both of these lenses is that they totally pass the Leica balance test. So they don't fall forward, you know, when they are just sitting here. Uh, a lot of more premium and uh, even some cheaper, a lot of cheaper lenses that have like wider apertures and stuff like that end up being a little bit too big and a little bit too front heavy. And it takes away from the just general portability, street photography style nature of the Leica system. And so these lenses both are tiny. They weigh just about nothing in comparison to most other lenses in the world. And so uh, in that aspect, they are really great. One of the things that I do love about the Ultron as well is it has a really nice focusing tab and at least my copy focuses and like is dampened actually a little bit more even than the Summicron. Um, they're both very smooth and kind of no issues either way, but it actually does feel really good. It has a little bit more resistance than the Summicron, but I would not say that's a bad thing. Uh, I actually might, maybe it's just because I'm used to it, but I might actually prefer the amount of resistance in the Voigtlander between the two. But I think that is kind of like an every copy of a lens is gonna be a little bit different anyway. So at the current price of the Voigtlander lens, which is about $600, I would say it is one of the best lenses you can buy for the M-mount system for the money. In the center, it's plenty sharp for my needs. But I will say that one of the things that is a little bit not concerning, but one of the things where it just is shows that it is a $600 lens is wide open in the corners. The corner sharpness on this lens just isn't that great. It shows up, especially on digital and especially when there's a lot of kind of busy stuff happening. And that is 
in all honesty, the reason why uh, it pushed me over the edge to order the 28 millimeter Sumicron, uh, especially the version two, as I have read a lot that the corner sharpness specifically in this lens is much improved even over the first version. But I think that is still even the first version must be better than this one um, just from the reviews and friends that I've talked to that have it now. Do I think that that is going to be a worthwhile upgrade for most people? Definitely not. I would say if this wasn't going to be one of my very primary wedding photography lenses, I'm pairing this lens, the 28 Sumicron, with my Leica 50 millimeter Sumilux spherical. Um, and I've obviously done a video on that one as well. That is kind of hopefully going to be my main two lens combo kit moving forward. And so for someone like me that like has to have uh, a very well performing lens at my two main focal lengths, this is kind of like a no brainer, despite the fact that it is incredibly expensive. Uh, I definitely have wanted this lens for a couple of years and finally pulled the trigger. But, you know, I think this whole thing is going to come down to like, do you need that kind of ultimate performance from a 28 millimeter lens? Again, for me, for all my personal stuff, for me and my kids, for street photography, and especially if you are a street photographer and you're mostly shooting at like F8, I have no issues with this lens at all. The times I've taken landscapes and stuff like that, even corner sharpness when stopped down is great. Uh, it's not going to have the same pop and micro contrast and all that stuff that you're going to see out of a Leica lens. Um, but especially on film, this thing definitely does the job and uh, is kind of a joy to shoot and bring around. Now, again, with the Sumilux, you're obviously going to get Leica performance and build quality and everything like that. I would say this lens, the Voigtlander, is sort of made like a tank. And I feel like as I'm making this video, it's just kind of like... I could just stop it right here and say, if you need ultimate corner to corner sharpness, if like all the way up here, you need the stuff to be sharp, wide open at F2 in extreme situations, save up and buy the Leica. You're not going to be impressed with the Voigtlander. I kept shooting it in lots of environments and stuff and then would just kind of get frustrated. And I photographed a wedding a couple months ago and finally was just like, all right, that's it. I'm using the 28 millimeter focal length enough that... I need the performance in the corners from this lens because of the work that I do. That being said, the vast majority of people, again, aren't going to need that. If you are not needing that ultimate performance all the way in the corners, buy the Voigtlander, save some money. If it doesn't perform well for you, then maybe consider moving up to the Sumicron. So thanks so much for watching. If you have any more questions specifically about these two lenses, uh, I just filmed a video on the Voigtlander 28 specifically that'll kind of break down a few more things about it. And then I will definitely do a video or two about the 28 millimeter Sumicron as I sort of use it and stuff like that and figure out for me if it's really worth the uh, ridiculous price upgrade uh, from the $600 Voigtlander 28 millimeter to the $4,900. I think the tax on this lens, if I would have bought it new, is more than I paid for the Voigtlander. So yeah, that'll be a good video. So if you're interested in either of those, subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you are interested in Leica cameras, in just general wedding photography, photography, all over the place. I'm doing a ton of lens camera reviews uh, coming up. I have a ton already in the hopper that are scheduled. So uh, if you're into that kind of thing, subscribing would be great. And thanks again, and I will see you on the next one.